And now all the pieces are together and we can build a corridor. To do this, on the Home tab under Create Design, we'll select the Corridor button. This will bring up the Create Corridor dialog. We can give our corridor a name. Style doesn't really matter. We're going to use the Alignment Picker uh, to pick the alignment since we have so many of them in this uh, particular drawing. We need to select our assembly and then our target surface which is going to be composite surface and I'm going to set baseline and region parameters and you'll see why actually when we get into this so since I selected set baseline and region parameters that's going to bring up the baseline and region parameters dialog and what we're going to do here is set up our regions. You can see that right now our corridor is set up to have uh, one, just one region, which means that we're only applying one typical cross section. So if I right click on that region, I can select split region. And I'll just go over here and, and graphically pick a point. I can change that later if need be. And it gives me an error, but it's nothing to really worry about. You can see now that I have, just like I wanted, three regions for my corridor. And what we're going to have is the approach to the bridge, we're going to have the bridge, and then we're going to have the road after the bridge. So uh, I've got everything set up here, what we need to do. I'm going to close this. I'm going to mark the corridor out of date. I don't want to rebuild everything. Um, but I want to take a look at some data that I've already marked on my drawing. I want to see what my bridge stations are, my beginning and end bridge station. Then I'm going to go to Prospector. I'm going to expand corridors and expand the corridor that I've been working on. Right click on it and select Properties. This brings back up the baseline and region parameters, and I'm going to go in and manually change my end station. Uh, the first one is going to be 0 plus 200. My start is going to be 0 plus 150. That takes care of my approach. I'm going to select my road section. And then I see that my bridge ends at station 0 plus 525. And the great thing about this, you'll notice as I enter these numbers for end station, the forward start station for the next region updates automatically. I do want to change the frequency to apply the assemblies. When I zoomed out, you could see that I had some lines that were spaced pretty far apart. I want to insert my assemblies a lot closer together. So along tangents, I'm going to set that to 5 meters. Uh, curve increments, both horizontal and vertical, I want those inserted every 2 meters. Uh, and then, of course, at every geometry point, whether horizontal or vertical. I need to set my targets for the corridor. I'm going to set my uh, composite surface for this corridor. That's my daylight. And I have a lot of other options for targets. For targets. Uh, the, the lanes that I use can actually target other things, but the way that I've got the corridor configured, I don't need to do that. So I click OK. Everything updates. And I can see that uh, I've got a lot, you know, I've got more insertions of the assembly that I did. There's my bridge approach. Let's flip this up into Object Viewer so we can take a look at it in 3D. You can see where my, my bridge approach comes up. I've got a ditch on both sides of the road and then daylight to the existing surface. I'm not showing the existing surface in this 3D view, but that is where the it, it terminates. Take a look and change my view style here. 
I was going to set it to realistic, but I don't have a realistic code set style applied. Let's take a look. You can see that the bridge looks great. And then the road after the bridge continues with the bridge. So it looks like I forgot something. And if I zoom out, I can, I can see there that the road on the uh, west side, excuse me, the east side of the bridge doesn't daylight. So I know something's not right. I neglected to change the assembly for that region. So all I have to do is go in and select that region, change that assembly. And I do need to set my target surface one more time. I can do it just one time. Click OK and rebuild the corridor. And you'll be able to see that uh, things update quite a bit. You can see that my, uh, my bridge approach, I, I'm daylighting a lot further down to the ground now. If I flip this up into a 3D view again, uh, you can see where we come off the bridge there. Got a nice uh, shallow daylight with a, uh, with a ditch there and a berm. And this looks pretty much like a road should. Let's close that out. And one thing I notice is over here at my roundabout, my road is extending all the way into the center of the circle. I don't want that. I'll modify that at a later point. Uh, so I want to go in and set the start of my corridor. Uh, I'll set that very big start station to something like uh, 0 plus maybe 150 or uh, let's see, 140. How about that? I'll rebuild the corridor once again. You can set this to rebuild automatically. I just like to have the choice. All right, so there we go. We're not encroaching into 